We always had plenty of rain, says Saidu Sawadogo, a common farmer. Harvests were sufficient. Back then, everything was green. There was forest around the villages. Now, there is only sand. My land is not nearly as fertile as it used to be, he laments. My storage shed is almost empty already, says the farmer. Pretty soon we're going to have to buy millet ourselves, but the price keeps going up. A year ago, 100 kilos cost 35 euros. Now, it's at 55 euros already. I can't afford it, only if my brother sends me money. His brother has been working as a farmhand, harvesting crops in the neighbouring country of Ivory Coast for 15 years. 17 people used to live on the family farm. Now only five people who can work remain, along with Saidu's 78-year-old father. His brother's sons recently moved to Ivory Coast too, during the current drought. It is out of the question for me, says Saidu. I have to stay here. The younger ones can leave or work in the gold mines in this area, like my wife and children already do. Saidu does not understand the exact meaning of climate change, but this much he does understand. Something is changing, and it's not good for us. Climate change is caused above all by the general warming, explains climate expert Isidore Zonga from Ouagadougou. From the 1960s to the present, We've recorded a rise in temperature of about 1.7 degrees. Greenhouse gases are to blame for this. Farmer Somme Claude has been recording the exact rainfall in a notebook since 1999. Perhaps not to scientific standards, but as someone directly affected by these changes. I began keeping these notes so that I could predict when the rain would come and when I could start sowing my crops. But these notes have also shown me how things are changing. If you compare 2010 to 2011, for instance, one year it rained heavily for five days, and then not at all for many days. Rural populations suffer disproportionately from weak and erratic rainfall. In a country like Burkina Faso, this includes almost 80% of the inhabitants. Poor harvests have created a state of chronic food insecurity in the country. Moreover, the groundwater level is sinking by approximately 0.5 to 2 meters per year in the Sahel zone. As a consequence, if a farmer digs a well, it runs dry within five years. Farmer Prosper Sawadogu is already employing modern rehabilitation techniques, such as stone belts and tree planting, but he is not making any headway in a struggle against a sinking water level. Water simply remains scarce. There's no river here, says Prosper, only a little spring. Watering the trees is crucial. Some need watering every day, others just once a month. I actually have to buy water. But the trees and the stone belt help me. Without them, the rain would just wash the soil away. We don't just show the farmers how to set up stone belts or plant trees. We supervise their efforts until the trees are strong enough. Tree survival rate is 77%, quite a success. Some of the trees bear fruit, guaranteeing the farmers a second source of income. Alongside global warming, local deforestation has played a role in desertification, says Isidore Zonga. The farmers themselves are responsible for this, but poverty forces them to chop trees for firewood. Some farmers even slash and burn areas of the forest to expand their acreage because the available ground has been depleted. People cut down trees without replanting, says farmer Prosper Sawadogu. If I hadn't started to plant trees myself years ago, we couldn't sit here in the shade right now, and my farm would already have been washed away by the rain. My harvests have suffered from the current drought too, but compared to other farmers with no trees and stone belts, I'm prospering.